The focus is not so much on orchids today, but I do have a collection of Tillandsias that have been with me since I got my Dendrobium of Phyllum mount, and they were attached to that beautiful piece of bark. I couldn't <laughs> exactly get that piece of bark without the Tillandsias attached to it, so yeah, I have a collection of Tillandsias. I don't do much with them, but once a year they get a good grooming, and boy have they exploded in growth. Some have now bloomed for me. Their original presentation is a little bit, yeah, counterproductive because of the pups that they've been growing in all these four years. On top of that, they collect a lot of dust. <laughs> they have some dead lower leaves. You can see Baloo's fur is on them, feathers, you name it. Anyway. So happy that you joined me even though this is not orchid related but because it may be a little bit awkward to do what I plan to do today I've got cousin it as company because he's never really seen them and he's probably going to be asking me questions as to what on earth are these things here on the table they look a little bit dead but they're not <laughs> cousin it already recognized something that could be his little brother this Talanzia right here <laughs> It was a tiny little thing when I got it and it's kind of growing up and all curly-whirly. He's saying it's not as elegant of a replica of him, but he sees a similarity. <laughs> I have no labels for my Talanzias, so I do apologize for that. Actually, no, I have one label because I bought it specifically because of its snowy white texture. But anyway, you can see that they're falling out over the little supports I created them. With the white support here that I use for my orchids, I made little curly whirly wells and basically turned them into the wells, snugging them up with their leaves and they're falling out. So what I'm going to do is just peel off the dead leaves at the bottom. You'd think that was relatively easy, no? Some are. I just want to peel that off and make that a little bit more presentable. And I'm trying not to touch the fuzz so much because the fuzz is their lifeline. That's where they capture their humidity. From the air, not so much, you know, me spraying them, which is what I do. Especially during the summer, they get like a spray every day, pretty much sometimes twice a day if I've got hot winds going. And I might be doing some damage to some good leaves on the bottom, but that's not really an issue what I do want to attempt to do is make sure I what I get off falls into the catch tray and well these roots that they have should be attaching to something but like I said I wanted that baked piece of cork bark for my dendrobium of phyllum these were a byproduct of that so yeah I'm not going to try and pull off the roots even though they may be dead but they're not here nor there Talanzia is taking most of their nutrition out of the air, hence air plant. But do not be mistaken that you can get your air plants to attach to something. You can start with super glue, but then the roots will actually start to grow as well. You see, you don't want to be removing fuzz like that. I may need to change the camera angle as the sun moves because this is not going to be a quick job for me. I'll speed things up when they come repetitive, but yeah, the roots are important and they would attach to whatever object you super glue your Talanzias on. Mine aren't super glued. Now, this is pretty easy because I still only have one fan going, but the other ones that have been growing pups, they don't really look the part. I may not be able to do much grooming I may just need to leave them and see if I need to secure them a little bit more because they're super lightweight. But yeah, back to the spraying. I do that now during the winter. Yeah, once a week. Plain RO water. And these have not been sprayed for over a week now. So today they are due. I do not dunk them because of where they live. At the end of the blooming alley, very inconspicuous, tucked away, not in the way because, you know, real estate is there mainly for my orchids. 
But at the end of the day, what I do here is either they get the residue dripping from the tolumnias that are above. When I spray the tolumnias during the summer, everything drips on these guys and that's plenty good as well. Or like now in the winter, I spray them as well and I, I'm not concerned about what goes into the crown because at the end of the day, I have an extremely dry climate and it's not like they're going to rot out on me. So this one was an itty bitty little one when I got it. I don't think I have any images from back in the day but it's looking a little tidier as well. I could go a little bit further with the lower leaves, even though they're good, but they're showing some dry ends. So seeing as we're here, we can do the one properly just to show you what I do. There we go. That one is kind of ready. Looks much, much better, much, much tidier. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get them back into the support the way I had them before, because obviously, as they grow in size, they also become a little bit more unruly and more difficult to manage. And this one is really tucked in nicely in its support. It has dead leaves at the bottom that I would like to get rid of. So instead of removing it from the support because it's nicely tucked in, I'm just going to cut the leaves off where I can. Let's see if I can get in there a little bit further. I mean, I am pedantic about wanting to get the stem nice and clean, get all the dead bits off, etc. But again, that's only because I'm dealing with them right now. At the end of the day, I wouldn't even notice within a couple of weeks whether I have or haven't done it. So the reason I'm doing this is because I do have some Tolumnias with scale. They are not on this bench because I don't want to perpetuate a problem that isn't there with the others, which is very strange, or maybe not. I mean, yes, it's a plant. And to get scale on a tolumnia is pretty rare as far as I'm concerned. If you know better, let me know in the comments. But um, now, for me it's rare, but seeing as they're living below the tolumnias, I had a pest a scale infestation during the summer of 2022 and it is possible that they fell down onto the tolumnia underneath and it's only one even though it's in a similar setup presentation you know there's two or three tolumnias in all the pots that I have here but it's only one that got the scale and I may just toss it because one tolanzia that I had and it was like a double, a repeat, a triple, so to speak. That was, it was sort of looking a little bit iffy and I never threw it away. So it lived under a shelf just lying there and every once in a while I would spray it. That was far away from all the orchids and it got scale as well. So what I did was, you know, go with my garlic alcohol, deal with the scale, but because the scale and the fuzziness are a match made in heaven, I scrubbed the leaves a little bit in order to get the scale bodies off of the Tillandsia. And it's not really a good idea to do that because they need the fuzz. That's how, as I mentioned, they get the humidity into their system from the air. This one has some dead leaves around the base. So we'll just make sure what we can see and what we can reach is what we're going to address. Lots of little curls going on here. This one here is a very, very slow grower. But it's come along nicely in four years. Whoops, and now we've just lodged the other one. Now maybe I can get at the base instead of having it like the cuts there. I can remove the bases of the leaves from the stem. So while it was just lodged nicely into its little support, at the end of the day, I guess I took off what was holding it in place. But you see how gorgeous these roots are? I hope you can see that. There, like that. They're pretty. They need the humidity, but they would attach. We've got growing tips. So if they were on something, it would attach by itself. I get in there a little bit further. That's a dead leaf tip right there. 
another dead leaf right here but I'm not gonna fuss with it too much because this one would be a nightmare to put back into its stand but here we are so this I would say is a repeat of the previous one that's over there they're similar but it hasn't grown as big as its compadre in the same place you can see how tiny they were. If this was its four-year progress, then you can see how tiny it, these were four years ago. Is that sign of scale? Just in case, we have a little garlic alcohol. Let's get some of the hair out as well. <laughs> Let that grow on and see if I can put this one back. This big one may be a problem. If I can get the spiral to catch somewhere, and then I turn the Talunzia and press down very gently so that it kind of, the leaves kind of sp spiral into the spiral and catch, if that makes any sense at all to what I'm saying. And obviously get it to turn and hold the way it was in position before because of its direction of growth. See why I only do this once a year? <laughs> and usually during the time of year where I don't get to play with my orchids as much. There we go. Come so. I will spray them all down at the end. So pretty in the sunlight with the silver. All right, moving on to the next one. I'm not going to bore you with all of them. But I'm just going to continue talking about my care because maybe that is of interest. You see, the first year I had them, I brought them all inside because I didn't have that many orchids. I brought them inside for the winter. But now, with the orchids taking up all the space inside, I don't want to waste that for Talanzias. So they stay outside in my climate here in southern Spain. Oh, they have to handle whatever temperatures are being thrown at them, the lowest being five degrees Celsius. Now even though these blooms are spent and it's not, not an issue, I want to see if I can cut them out. And this one is still alive, but it has grown exponential pups all around it that make it look very unruly. And this is where I've lost my presentation with, you know, that single spiral and have them all look nice in a grouping in a pot. And this cluster is going against the grain. You can see how it's growing out of the pot and I may need to readjust and rethink what I'm gonna do with it. Hang it by a wire and let it do its thing, but where do I hang it? That is the question I've been pondering while I was leading up to this project. If there are some that I would just hang, create a wire and hang them, I wouldn't know where to hang them because of again the space in the blooming alley and people might say you've got a lot of space you've got a lot of rods yes but they are occupied during the summer and especially when my stanhopia grows it takes up an entire rod all by itself so didn't want to have to start contemplating all the fandangle care of moving telumnias around including moving baskets around based on sunlight direction too much sun too hot you know but i may just have to do that for the odd one simply because needs must i've taken on the responsibility of these plants and i will try and do my best by them and that released the cluster this is the slowest growing one i have here this is like a bulbo something or other again I'm not sure, but I've heard it referred to as Bulbo something. And I'm not going to make tags, so even if you give me the names, I would appreciate them, but I'm not going to put tags into these pots. I'm not, uh, not to say I'm not fond of Talanzias, to be honest with you. I like them. But, oh look, we can take a pup off right down here. No, not a pup, but an old blooming growth. We can just take that entire growth off because it is so old. There we go. That's not going to do anything because it's grown all its pups up here. So that's the pup from the previous blooming 
cluster. But we can get in there and take some leaves off. Once, once the cluster is, whoopsie, don't want to be doing that, don't want to be breaking tips. This one's hard to handle. But once the cluster is pretty much, you know, bloomed out, it produces its pups. And then the cluster, the previous cluster will hold on and look nice for quite some time, many years to come. But it'll only ever produce one pup depending on the species Tolumnia or hybrid you're dealing with. On that one older fan that just already looked a little bit tired that could come off. So I'm going by visual, not necessarily saying I know what I'm talking about, but I'm just going by visual. I wonder if my fingers can twist off the flowers, spent flower nodule in the middle there. There we go. Doesn't look like really nice when you do that. So maybe I shouldn't do that. I just feel like while I'm grooming them, that includes getting rid of what looks a little bit unpleasant. It's not going to last very long because we've got two very furry pups, especially one. <laughs> He's a German Spitz and his hair grows everywhere. And while I talk and twist, etc., I hope everything's in frame. They also say that when they come into bloom, you're not supposed to water the tops of the blooms because they will fade very fast. I don't pay attention to all of that because at the end of the day, I am actually mainly growing them for their foliage, for their way, their growth habit. That's what I like about them. The blooms, while pretty, it's what they do before they come into bloom that is gorgeous. They start to look like coral. It's very, very, very beautiful. That's what I like. When the leaves change color, like these two pups here, if they were to come into bloom, the leaves would start to go pink or peach, some kind of a coral color. And then you know your Tillandsia is about to bloom. And then it's done its job. But you see this cluster now, I can't put it back into the support unless I do a lot of wiring, which is not something I want to do. So I'm just going to put it aside and think about it while I work on the others. This one doesn't need much grooming. You can see another pup growing right there. That's cool. Seeing as it's so slow, the first one didn't bloom for me. The second one, it's been growing over the years. Super, super slow, as I mentioned. Now it's growing a third one, but I have another one that did bloom for me. And to be honest, as funky as these structures look, I was not impressed by the blooms at all. So it's not like something that goes, oh wow, it finally bloomed for me. We'll keep this as is for now. That empty space we might be able to fill with something else. So that's that pot done. Here is my only identifiable Tillandsia that I can give you. That is Tillandsia. Tectorum snow. Look, isn't it beautiful? Also a very slow grower. But there's not much that I need to do with this one. Beautiful fuzzy texture to it. I love it. So this one I did buy and I got it from Rölke Ojidin in an orchid order. They had Talunzias back in the day. And I thought, you're beautiful. And then I should have remembered all the names because on their web page back then, they also had identified, you know, the ones that I can't identify, but I wasn't entirely sure. No, I wasn't too fussed about it. Yeah, but I do have the Rolka tag right here for that one. I'll put the name up on the screen. This is the one that bloomed for me right here. Beautiful long spike, but yeah, unimpressive blooms. Anyway, I'm going to mosey with the other ones, enjoy some of the sun, and I'll be back when they're finished and we'll see what we can do with the empty space that I may be creating on several pots. Oh yikes, this one's very, very dirty. <laughs> Bird seed and everything. Oh, spider webs, Baloo's hair, anyway.
these leaves are coming off nicely at the bottom. There's not that much resistance like with my first one. See, it bloomed as well. This one right here, it's a beautiful one. Not the blooms, but I love the structure of it. Despite that this one looks spent and the pup looks gorgeous, I'm gonna leave this one on because it's still very, very sturdy. There's too much going on down here that I just don't wanna remove it. The pup itself doesn't have any roots. It's not hot and humid like they like, so we'll let the mother plant provide what the pup needs in the meantime and not starve it of any support, seeing as it's developing so nicely. Oh, look, a very spent pup right here. That's going to create some air. That's awesome. I wonder if that will just pop off easily or if I have to cut it. See that? That's great. This is a vigorous variety right here. <laughs> I never even saw that this was spent. Let's see if we can just twist it. No. Nope. Let's see what we're up against. If I can just pull at the base and see what comes out. Maybe I can just take it off in layers by just pulling the old leaves. Seems to be working really well. I'm learning as I'm going because these have only matured in the past two years to the point of actually blooming and producing many pups. So I am not the exact, let's say, source of super duper information how to get your Tillandsias to bloom. Mine just do once they mature. And I'm sure that many would say, well, it's too cold to leave them outside. Mm, you can see they're alive. <laughs> they might look better if I didn't leave them outside, but I don't think it's too bad of a result considering what they have to put up with. A lot of fur in that one. Here's a spent fan as well, but there's still a lot of energy in it. So we'll just work with the base. You can see maybe, hopefully. It's difficult for me to see the screen because of the glare of the sun, which I'm not complaining, but I hope you can see the original fan was the one that of course is dead. So this would be the second fan that grew and bloomed. And I'm sorry I don't have any images for all the blooms because I only take them sporadically and I'm not recording who does what. I take them mainly when their leaves change color because that's for me the pretty part, the attractive part. So despite this one having a different color of leaves right here, you can see there's a little bit of bronze and coral. That's only the remnants of the fact it's bloomed out. This one is changing color, but I believe it's because it's too cold, right? So this could be just cold stress. So I'm not fooled that this one is coming into bloom at any point in time. They also say that the ones with the greener foliage like this without as much fuzz. So this is like green. It could be a little bit darker green, but the influence of light and cold it all has an effect on these guys. Anyway, these are more sensitive and not as robust as the ones that have the gray fuzz, the silver look about them. These need less water. They're more drought tolerant as well, as opposed to these right here with no fuzz. They need more water. But again, all of mine get treated exactly the same. I said I was going to speed up this process and it turns out I have a lot to say about my Tillandsias. And you know what? If I ever interchange Tillandsia with Tolumnia, <laughs> sorry, creature of habit. <laughs> Apologies for that. These are Tillandsias or air plants. There we go. That looks more presentable. Okay, going to try and stay out of the sun. Pick out the spent blooms, little pup coming right up here. Ah, oh, too cute. 
This is the variety that had scale on. There's one under the staging stand on the lower shelf that had scale where I, you know, tried to get the bodies off and also removed the fuzz. So I do have these now in doubles, which is, well, like I said, I'll try and do my best by them. Except the one that I'll show, I'm working with the one that has the major scale signs of right at the end because I don't want to be touching any other of my Tillandsias after that. Now this is the one that bloomed so I could theoretically take it off. I'm not ready to do that yet. You can see I stabilized it with a wire there. Pup has a root. Let's see what we can do to improve this a little bit. I don't think the pup needs to have its mom anymore. So we're going to separate them. Let's do that without jiggling the camera too much. There we go. Yeah. Mom is spent to a degree. And pup can be in the support because it also has its own little roots now. There we go. No, I'm not putting any cinnamon on this. My climate is super, super dry, as mentioned. But if you were in a very humid environment, maybe. If it's raining a lot in your climate, you might want to consider putting some cinnamon on where the pup has come off and has created a wet wound. You see these clusters here? I can remove this relatively easily. Here's a a mama plant that is also spent. She's coming off really nicely. Pup growing down there. Too cute. I have to say, I do like that these are called pups. <laughs> it makes it so cute and quaint. So with a fertilizer, if that were to be a question, whatever drips from the telumnias above, they also get, which is usually 100 parts per million of, you know, the fertilizer I use for my orchids. <laughs> but I don't target them specifically with fertilizer at all. It's just whatever drips drown. I would prefer to, you know, just have them with plain RO water. And when I have my sprayer with plain RO water and I'm doing my rounds, I do target Zolumnias with that. Okay, so now we have a cluster that should go back into something like that. That would be, you know, kind of pretty. And I wonder if I can fandangle it into the spiral. This one would be the next one that would be spent. So we'll take into consideration the growth habit of this cluster. Ha! Huh. You see, we're starting to get issues as they do their little cluster thing. That may hold for now. Let's look at the one in the back. It's got a lot of nonsense going on down here, but it's clean. So mom has bloomed out and is producing a pup. We'll leave that for a moment or wait a second. We forgot about its original one. Let's get it back in here and tighten the spiral a little bit. Comme ça. Not convinced about this one here, but we'll have to wait and see. Maybe one day I'll find it all blown off. <laughs> and here's the single cluster that got scale on it that lives under the shelf, under the ridiculous Lelia's bottom shelf, tucked in the corner in the shade. Speaking of shade, yeah, they get bright, bright shade all the time during the summer and super bright sun during the winter. It hits them directly, but it doesn't seem to affect them. Now, the structures look clean, but you see where I was removing bodies right here. So that fuzz is destroyed, but it doesn't seem to have hurt this Tillandsia at all. So we'll keep it. Let me see, I've got an empty spiral. 
seeing as it is totally and without any scale. And it's been without scale for many, 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 many months. I mean, many. If I were to try to think about how long I've not had scale on this one, oh, probably eight months now. So we can risk putting it together with someone else and give it its place. Sorry for the jiggle of the camera, if that just affected the visual. Come on, let's get this spiral up here. You know you want to. There we go. Not exactly presentation-wise a balance. <laughs> Too tall to Lanzias. It should actually be filled with a little bit of a fluff, but it is what it is. We'll work with this. <laughs> okay, the last one I'm going to show you now that I've got all of these out of the way is the one that is very, very unruly, gets hit by a lot more rain based on where it lives on that lower shelf and it is a beautiful grassy one and then we have another one of those clear or let's say less fuzzy ones which I'm going to address and show you first because I may just toss this because you see the damage it's gone right into even the new growth and you can see the bodies they're dead but I haven't been fussing around with this at all because I don't want it to be in any way, shape or form affecting my others. But you see, it's, it's one fan. And yeah, I think I'm just gonna toss it. It's too risky. Not just for the other Talanzias that I don't want to lose, obviously, but because of my orchids. So whatever is lurking or hiding in there, it can lurk and hide and do its thing elsewhere. Now, this one, I love its texture and its structure, but it's become a bit of a headache. You see, I've been trying to wire it in again with a separate wire, which hasn't done much because once it starts to grow pups, they also change the center of gravity and boy, is it growing pups. Let me get it out. There we go. Look at it. It's beautiful. I love this growth habit. Very grassy. Okay, let's clean it up first. Let's see what we can work with when it gets back to its spiral. We'll have to wait and see. This one bloomed for me as well. And I was so looking forward to seeing its blooms. Look at the baby pup in there. Woohoo! Look at that. So cute. I was so excited to see its blooms. And then, of course, it was like a lead balloon effect. <laughs> That's another little pup. A little bit bigger. And here's a third one. So I can't do anything about mama. Mama plant has to stay. Because all the pups are still depending on her. Speaking of pups, I've got one right at my feet. And he just laid back and ditched the tripod. Sorry. Okay, now, seeing as its growth habit is what it is, this would be suitable for its own pot. I'm gonna have to remove my fur pup, not my Talanzia pup. I need to be where he is lying. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, we'll take one of the supports out. And we will do something with the bigger support and get it around the Talanzia and then secure her back in the pot. And elongate the spiral a little bit. Talk about not consolidating your plants, hey? Instead of doing a proper consolidation so that space is never an issue again, here we are. One Talanzia, one pot. Oh well. One should be happy, I would say. That means progress. I have removed some of the fuzz around the mama plant. That was not intentional. It's not something I would advise doing. She is going to be fading out. So what we're going to do is watch out for the pup at the base there. 
and hopefully get the spiral to do what is best just to support it get it nice and centered at least for the time being while she's doing her job in nurturing her pups we'll get her nice and centered what a fiddle hey <laughs> it makes you think just wire them and hang them yeah i explained that earlier why i'm not doing it get that back into the pot there we go once i clean out the mess these are going to look okay so let me do that and let's see if we can work with this not sure we'll find out hey cousin what's your opinion on all of this <laughs> are they weird or are they weird they are weird aren't they yeah i agree but they're fun okay i've got this cluster from before i've got one spiral i'm gonna try and do this on camera i'm gonna undo the spiral so much fuss cousin it i know but only once a year whereas with you i fuss all the time right every day i fuss over you so don't don't judge me here with what i'm doing now so one spiral goes through the pup and the mama plant like that let's get them a little bit further down so now i'm just squeezing the spiral just to get it around one of the mama plants there we go looks a little bit funky but it's holding now let's see where we're going to put it you think we can squeeze it in there cousin it you think i think that's where it came out of initially i won't know until i do the editing but i think this will work squeezing the pot so that i can dislodge the stones in there and get my spike inside <laughs> Are you still with me? <laughs> Let me know in the comments what you think of all of this. And give me a like for effort. <laughs> Cousin It is bemused. At least I hope it was entertaining. <laughs> there we go. Look. That looks pretty good, huh? Amateur, but good. Now, to give them some water after all of that handling. Ooh, I feel a bit itchy look at what we removed i know i'm sorry please don't be mad at me it's too risky i'm sorry but look family picture they are groomed and purdy and now they get a drink it's late afternoon not the ideal time to be watering but i'm not drowning them and we still have two hours of sunshine left once again dry climate but you see how the colors change. They become a more vibrant green until they dry out again. That wasn't a lot of water at all, but I know that I'm done when I see all the silver ones going green. During the summer, it takes a lot longer for them to go green like that. But once they have this green color, that's enough water, no more. And from here on in, probably another week, 10 days, depending on what's going on outside, no maji. Maji being Swahili for water. Anyway, <laughs> if you've watched to the end, thank you so much. Cousin It couldn't tune off. <laughs> he had to deal with what was happening right in front of his eyes. But we appreciate your time and we appreciate your support. Thank you for your company. I hope that you learned something. I hope this was of interest, something different. But hey, once a year, my Talanzias come out. Thank you so, so much for watching. Cousin It and I wish you a beautiful day on that one condition. What? Wait, I was saying goodbye. What? You had your drink this morning. Stop. Your dish is still full. Gosh, he's so greedy. Anyway, Cousin It and I say goodbye. Have yourselves a fabulous day on that one condition, though, please. Let you stay safe. Take care. Bye. Bye.